2023 is going to be the year for the best shots you've ever taken. So watch my five tips that will make the biggest impact on your photography this year. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I'm a professional photographer. I've been in the game 12 years, teaching for 10 of those, and I kind of like photography. Secrets out. One thing that I've learned along the way is that we never peak. Well, at least you shouldn't, because if you decide you're over photography and want to move on, great, maybe you've peaked then. Uh, but if you want to continue being a photographer, there's never a point where you're like, you know what? I've learned it all. I'm good. I never have to absorb any more information. I know everything there is to know. Your work can always get better. Your work always will get better. And you will always be improving, which is pretty darn cool. So I'm going to give you five tips on how to get the most out of your year. So this is the best year you've ever had as a photographer. Plus a bonus tip, tip 0.5, because we're not even to number one yet. But I hear and you know, the FDA hasn't confirmed this yet, but you will instantly be a better photographer if you subscribe to this channel. I think the subscribe arrow is down there. It's somewhere. Wherever it may be, click on it. Instantly take better pictures. True story. All right, let's do it. Tip number one. You know, I never liked counting on number one with this first finger because then I have to go like one, two, three, four, and then five. It, five is out of order. Let's go Euro style. Number one, nail down your go-to poses. Number two, try something new at every shoot. Number three, get a mentor. Number four, invest in education. And number five, practice with intention. Let's dive in. Alrighty, nail down your go-to poses. Super duper important. When we go into a shoot, we need to have the confidence to guide our clients through poses that make them look good so they feel good and then they buy our photos. That's what we gotta do. And going into every single shoot being like, oh my gosh, uh, I don't know what kind of poses to do. Maybe I'll start here. Maybe I'll do those this time. That is only going to create unwanted stress and chaos. And it's not going to make you look like a very confident photographer in front of your client. And if you are not confident, they're not going to be confident because they're already anxious about doing a boudoir shoot. Nobody wins. So doing practice shoots with non-clients is the best way to dial in your go-to poses. I have, I don't know, like 30 different poses that I do with every single client. And you're like, holy smokes, 30? I don't even know one. It's cool. I didn't start with that, but I've been doing this for 12 years and I do those 30. And then I've got, I don't know how many other variations and other things that I can do with lots of other poses to fill in the rest of the shoot. And I'm going to get to point two in a second, but having your go-to poses is the foundation because you can, you know, leg over, hand up here, hand back there. You're like, oh, cool. That's one pose, two poses, three poses, four poses. Don't do this one. Uh, but then you just start flowing from that. And that one pose now turned into 10. So you're like, oh, cool. If I want 100 unique poses, I really only have to start with 10. 10 is way more manageable than 30 or 100 or whatever number you want to end up at. So having your 10 go-to poses that you can do for every single shoot, every body type, every age, every whatever, is going to make your life so much easier and give your client a better experience. So if you wanna know what mine are, head to boudoirguild.com, I'll have it linked down below. And I've got a guide on the homepage that is the, the 10 poses that everybody buys. I think it's like my top 10 poses that sell every time. I don't exactly remember what it's called, but you'll see it when you get there. It's the only guide you can download from my homepage. It's free, just enter your email, I will email it to you, and you can do those poses. Also, in the guide, I don't just show you a photo and be like, hey, do the, do the pose. I actually tell you how to put the client into the pose. Like first bring the knee across and then bring the hand up under the chin, but turn the hand so the side is over here. Have them look up and do the thing. I give you exactly what you need to know to do the pose to get you started. So head over and check that out. All right, number two, try something new at every single shoot. This is really important for a couple of reasons. Number one, you get to have fun and play and experiment and stay creative as a photographer because that's why we all got into this in the first place. No one sat around and be like, how do I make a half million dollars a year with a skill I have never explored before? I'm gonna start a photography business. 
No one does that. No, we love photography. And then someone's like, hey, you're really good. You should start a business. And so we do. Here we are. So how do you stay in it as a photographer? Because if your heart's not in it, if you get bored, if you get stressed, if you feel like every day is just the same routine over and over again, that's not the goal we want. We want to stay excited about photography so that we can do this as a career. Because if you're going to show up day in and day out and keep doing the thing, you better still love it or you might as well have kept your miserable desk job, right? If you're just in it for the paycheck. So try something new at every single shoot. You've already got your go-to poses, so you know you're going to deliver consistent quality images to your client. But I don't know, maybe this time you built a fake shower scene or used colored gels or you bought a new chair to play with or you're like, you know what? I've never done poses laying on the floor. Let's try laying on the floor poses. So many different ways that you can play every single shoot, even if it's just a couple new things. Clients bring in their own unique wardrobe. They've got different lengths of hair. They've got different props they might bring in. Always something new that you can play with. Make sure you do it. Number three, this one was huge for me, get a mentor. Firstly, a mentor is not a coach. They're very, very different. A coach will tell you what you're supposed to be doing. A mentor will teach you how to think about the things that you are doing. Very different, both very important. And number four is kind of the next part of that. So get a mentor. This is someone who has done what you want to do, and can help you get there also up here. It's not about how do I pose better? It's not about where do my lights go? This is how do I change my mindset so that I can be a successful business owner, so that I can be happy making money, so that I can serve others in a sustainable way. Because if you don't believe that having a ton of money is a good thing, you're never going to have money and you're always going to be broke because rich people are the enemy and you will do everything you can subconsciously to prevent yourself from ever being in a position where you might, you know, hate yourself for having money. When in reality, it's, it's all up here, right? Because we can make a ton of money and donate a lot of it and start a nonprofit. I started a nonprofit this year. Stoked for that. That's another video. And we can do good in our community, if we have the funds to do it. But one thing that I've learned is you can never be poor enough to help other people. So having money is absolutely vital and you have to have a good relationship with money. A mentor can help you with that. Same thing with business. You're not a photographer, you're a business owner. You just happen to take pictures. Getting into that mindset will change everything. A mentor can help you do that. Also, being able to grow as a person and develop and set boundaries and time management, all these things, your mentor can help you with. You're like, neat, Mike, where do I find one? Start going to business networking events and not like MLM meetings where as soon as you walk in, they're trying to sell you essential oils. Not my jam. Don't do it. But instead, find, you know, BNI or Toastmasters or if you've got a university club or what is it? Club Corp is the, the big company that oversees all of these groups. Here in Silicon Valley, we have the uh, Capital Club. San Diego, California has University Club. All the big cities across the country have these business networking organizations where you pay a monthly membership, you can go and, you know, it's a, uh, just go look into it. Club Corp, check out the hosting or the, the groups that they got. They can be very valuable in meeting people who can help you along your path or find people who are in the industry, in the world that you want to be a part of and just reach out and ask. Don't ask to take someone to coffee to pick their brain because that's selfish. Nothing in it for that person. Uh, but with mentorship, you develop a relationship. It's an exchange. And someone who's willing to be your mentor will have a better system in place to help you grow without, you know, just being like a free coaching session. So find someone that you admire, who's doing the thing you want to do, who has the mindset that you want to achieve, and then ask in exchange for something. So when I got my mentor, I went to a business event and this guy spoke on stage and I didn't know who he was when he got up there, but he said something during his, his performance that totally resonated with me. And I'm like, I got to meet this guy. I, I need to find out who he is. So at the end of his talk, I went up to him and I met him and we started chatting about books and, and things and we totally connected. And I'm like, Hey, do you need a photographer? He's like, I do need a photographer. I'm like, great. I take really cool photos. 
I would love to be your photographer. Um, I can't afford your your coaching, but could I photograph you in exchange for your mentorship? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And that's how I got in. Easy peasy. Now, given we lived eight hours apart, so I would travel down there once a month. But you're like, I don't have the funds. I don't have the availability. I made so much more money because of my relationship with this person and all the people I met through him. Like not even close to the amount of time and money I spent building all those relationships. Uh, I just created opportunities for myself and you can do the exact same thing. All right. I can count. Number four, invest in education. Obviously, I have courses available for you. It'd be neat if you purchase those. They work. It works for me. Uh, But either way, invest in education. Michael Hyatt has great resources on time management. Um, Rick Mulready, Amy Porterfield can teach you how to sell things online. Like there are so many brilliant people out there sharing knowledge with you. If you are only piecing together free information, it's going to take you so much longer to get to the same point because it either takes time or it takes financial investment to reach a certain level of education. Both can get you there. I didn't have access to any of of these courses or any of that when I got started. I figured it all out on my own, but it took me a lot longer because I didn't have anyone to teach me how to do the things that I'm teaching you how to do. If I could go back and do it again, I probably would have reached out to another photographer who was already making a boatload of money and be like, hey, can I just pay you to shadow you? Um, I don't want to, you know, I'll work for you or whatever. Can I just pay you to learn from you? And then, you know, I could have, I could have fast tracked a lot of this and shaved years off my education. So you're investing your time or your money. Both are investments. The quicker you learn the stuff and start making money, the sooner you can reinvest that money to learn even faster and live the life that you want to live. However, you investing time into something, no matter how much money you make, you'll never be able to create more time. So consider that. It might seem expensive to put money toward your education, whoever's courses they may be, but time is the one thing you can never make back. So consider that when you are deciding what is expensive and what is not. All right, and number five, practice with intention. This is a big one. So you're like, okay, cool. I need to try new things. I need to get these courses so I can learn how to be a better photographer and then just go out and book a bunch of shoots and shoot everyone that I know so that I can learn as fast as I can. Sure, but you can also waste a lot of time and not actually gain any traction. So what do I mean by practice with intention? You book a shoot with a friend because you just need to get someone in front of a camera so you can start learning how to do this. Cool. The focus of that shoot is poses in a chair. You're not going to touch the bed, the floor, the couch. You're not going to stand. Chair. Exhaust every possible thing you can do in that chair. Get a handful of your go-tos, a few other things you want to dial in. Next shoot, focus on the bed. Next shoot, standing. Next shoot, laying on the floor. Next shoot, couch. As opposed to few on the chair, few on the couch, few on the bed, few on the whatever, because you'll shoot whatever's easy and comfortable and then you'll move to the next piece of furniture or the next lighting setup or the next whatever and never really get to know that one thing intimately. So practice with intention. The goal of today's shoot is to master posing on a chair or at least get really, really comfy with it. Today's uh, intention for my shoot is to do one light setups and I wanna do short lighting, broad lighting, silhouette, and maybe some overhead stuff. One light. The next shoot you do, two lights. But keep your practicing very, very focused so you can get the most out of that time. All right, so those are my five tips to become the best photographer you can this year. Number one, nail down your go-to poses. Number two, try something new at every single shoot. Number three, get a mentor. Number four, invest in your education, preferably money, because you can make that back. You can't make back time. And number five, practice with intention. Everything you do needs to serve a purpose or you're wasting your time. It's that simple. Alrighty, if you want to check out those courses I mentioned earlier, head to boudoirguild.com. You can't miss them. I try to make them real easy to find. They will fast track your success. This is exactly what I do in my own business to bring in multiple six figures of revenue and you can do the same. Also, I think the quickest way to become a better photographer is just subscribe to this channel. I mean, it's it's science, it's proven facts. Uh, and I've also got other killer videos on this channel, which is 
is why you want to subscribe so you don't miss any of them about marketing, about sales, about posing, about lighting, about how to just be a good human and all kinds of good stuff. So be sure to subscribe so you can be a better photographer. You're amazing. See you inside. <laughs>